I'm here in Suriname, South America for chapter five of Kindred Guardians, uh, photographing Monique Poole. She's my subject for this chapter and she runs a sanctuary for, well, rather than tell you what they are, let me show you. They're these guys right here. Say hello. <laughs> Stay tuned to see the pictures. I'm Justin Mott and welcome to my home in Hanoi, Vietnam. And today I'm gonna to talk about photos. Imagine that, a photographer that talks about photos and shares photos on YouTube. Isn't that interesting? This is a segment I call six for one. So I'm gonna take six different images from one story and I'm gonna break down those images. Each of those images fall into a category which I'll explain later, but I'm looking for six types of images in every single story I do. I'm gonna pick my favorite from a recent story that I did in Suriname about the sloth lady of Suriname and tell you what I was looking for and a little backstory about those images. And in the end, I will show you a final slideshow of my photo story, so stay tuned. For this episode of Six for One, I'm gonna show you images from my photo story about Monique Poole, also known as the Sloth Lady of Suriname. Now, Monique does work in sloth conservation in Suriname. I spent about eight days shadowing Monique for my personal project, Kindred Guardians. For those of you that don't know, Kindred Guardians is a personal project that I'm working on where I photograph people around the world that dedicate their lives to helping animals. The project will be made into a book, it will be made into a traveling exhibition, and so far the project has been featured in National Geographic, Washington Post, Greenpeace, Paris Match, and a couple other international publications. So this is not a gear segment, but just quickly I'll talk about the gear I use because I know some people are interested in that kind of stuff, but this is gonna be kind of short and really anticlimactic. So the gear I use for this shoot it's very, very simple, and this is the gear I use on all my personal project stuff, and even now, and even now I'm using it on my assignment work as well. So I use the Leica M10D here. This is a digital camera without a screen. Doesn't make any sense, right? Anyway, I love it. Did a whole separate review about it. You can check that out. And for a lens, I use the Leica Sumulux 35 1.4. Ah, oh, what a beauty, so small. Love this lens. So I use this setup. I do have a couple other lenses that I take with me, but 90% of the images that you see today were taken with this lens and this camera. In addition to that, I did take a couple shots with the drone, so I use a Mavic Pro for that, but that's kind of it for gear, so if you're just interested in gear, you can leave now, but please stay. It'll be fun to have you around. So a little background about the story, because it's important to understand a little bit about the story so you understand what I'm trying to achieve with my images. Like I mentioned before, this is one chapter of my personal project, Kindred Guardians. I heard about Monique through a friend. I heard about her wonderful work in sloth conservation. She felt like the perfect person to feature in my project. I contacted her in a very sloth-like manner. We responded back and forth. It took a long time with her. She does take a long time, but in her defense, she's typically in the field working and helping sloths, not sending emails to photographers that want to follow her around for many days. So Monique agreed. I booked my ticket. I flew from Vietnam to Suriname, and I spent eight days with Monique telling her story. Let's get into the six types of images that I'm looking for. What am I looking for when I'm photographing? What kind of images am I trying to capture when I tell a story, whether that be on an assignment doing a story or whether that be for my personal project telling a story? I'm essentially looking for six types of different images. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Now, in the end, I'm not saying I'm looking for a total of six images. I'm just looking for images that fall within these six categories. I'm looking for a scene setter. I'm looking for a detail shot. I'm looking for an intimate moment. I'm looking for a shot of everyday life. I'm looking for a striking portrait. And lastly, I'm looking for something beautiful. What does that all mean? Well, don't worry. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to show you pictures. I'm going to show you what I'm after. Let's start with the first image I'm looking for. I am looking for a scene setter, an image that gives you a sense of place, an image that takes you to the place where I'm photographing that tells you something about the story or the location where I'm doing the story. So for this case, I needed to bring people to Suriname. I needed to bring people to the forest. I needed to bring people to the places where Monique works and where she rescues sloths. So I typically achieve this, especially in my wildlife work, is by using a drone. So I typically fire the drone up in the air and I try to get an overall that gives you a sense of place, that brings the viewer into the country where I'm working in, that gives a sense of place 
place for the animals and the habitat and the people that work that are helping the animals. So for this case, the first day I was at Monique's Rescue Center, I fired the drone in the forested area. It was a beautiful area. I sent the drone up in the air, got some nice, beautiful shots at sunrise, a really great sense of place. It was very, and, and of course it was relative to the story because that's where she releases the slots. So it was a nice shot. It was a great way to start as a scene center. My favorite scene center wasn't that shot. My favorite scene center came a couple days in when Monique was on a rescue for a sloth. She was rescuing a sloth in a small neighborhood in the capital city that was pressed right up against the forest. And she had told me a bit about this. The reason that she has to rescue sloths is because as they develop Paramaribo, the capital city, you know, the sloths are running out of places to go. There's a lot of these forest fragments in the city and as they develop them, the sloths are losing their natural habitat and they end up in people's backyards and that's when they call Monique. So I really thought at the moment she told me that, I thought this would be great to get a shot that really shows these forests within the city, that shows how they're flushed up next to the city. So during a rescue, a couple days in, after she rescued one of the sloths, a little side note that was kind of funny was during the rescue, you know, during the first time we were rescuing a sloth, I was with her and as she's trying to rescue it, she's like needing my help. Other people around with their phones and I flew halfway around the world to photograph her and I'm trying to like, she's calling, like, Justin, help me. I'm like, I, I flew so far to get this picture. And so I'm like with one hand taking a photograph, trying to photograph her and like with the other hand, like I'm like trying to help her rescue. It was very difficult, very, it was kind of funny, but like it's always that weird line as a photographer, like how much do you participate? Like I did want to help the animal, but at the same time I flew all the way there and everyone else is around with their phones. And I'm like, oh, anyway. So after the rescue, I noticed that, oh, this is probably this is exactly what she's talking about because right next to the neighborhood where she rescued the sloth was the forest where the sloth came from. It's just pressed up right up against the sea. Sloths are slow. They're not moving fast, so they're not going too far. Usually you can find where they came from right away because it took them like an hour just across the road. And the sloth sort of ended up in that person's backyard. So I fired the drone up in the air in the city. I didn't really have any permits. Didn't even know if it was okay to do it. And what I was trying to achieve in that, I wanted to get a nice shot looking down to show like sort of half of the forest area, the densely forested area and the urbanization and the homes right there. And this was my favorite shot because it really did, as, as a scene setter, it really did tell the story all in one shot about the situation, why the sloths are in this situation, why Monique has to rescue them. So it worked out great. And then I had the drone up in the air. Someone did fire a gun at it. It was kind of weird because I heard two gunshots and and we looked around, some guys were yelling, and I think it's because they had something else and they thought like I was spying on them or taking photos of them. I should probably look through the footage and see if I got anything weird of what they were doing. But I survived, I survived, no one got hurt in that situation. But that's, that's why I chose the scene center, that's why it was great for me. The other shot might be more beautiful aesthetically, but this shot was a better shot to tell the story as a scene center. The shot I'm looking for is an intimate moment. And this is probably one of the hardest shots for me to capture because this just takes time, it takes patience, and it takes a little bit of luck. Now for me, that intimate moment in a situation like this is gonna come from Monique interacting with a sloth. I arrived at night at the rehabilitation center and I didn't really get a look around and really have my bearings. So in the morning when I was looking around, I, I, I saw like a sloth-like, I saw like a sloth-like uh, creature out of the corner of my eye. And I, I got all excited and got my camera, turned it on. And it turned out to just be a stuffed animal of a sloth. So I was like, ah, oh, what a bummer that was. I thought like, wow, this is really starting off really, really nicely. A sloth came to visit the center and it's just sort of out and it turned out to be just a stuffed animal. But anyway, the next morning I got up, same thing, up at sunrise, corner of my eye, saw the sloth. I'm like, I'm not falling for that one again, sloth, stuffed animal. But as I looked closer, I, I did do like a triple take and I was like, oh, forget it. But I looked closer and there was a real, and there was a real sloth next to the stuffed animal. And that's when I got a, and that's when I got my camera and that's when I got my shots. And that's the first time I've ever seen a sloth in real life. That was very exciting. And it just so happened that this was a sloth that Monique had raised as a baby. It's a sloth that she released nearby her center because she raised it for so long. The sloth does live in the wild, but about once a month, that sloth will come in to say hi, we'll come by the center. And that morning after I took like about a million shots of the sloth on its own next to stuffed animal, as Monique woke up and as Monique started uh, interacting with the sloth, those were my great moments. That's exactly what I came for. And this was on my second day because when the sloth comes to the center, Monique will check on its health. So she was checking the weight. She was weighing the sloth on a scale. She was feeding it water, making sure it wasn't dehydrated. And the sloth will usually spend about a day or two there and then go back into the wild because the sloth actually doesn't live too far. There's just so many great moments that morning and I got some great interactions with her and the sloth. But th this was my favorite one because it was just that touch and that look and that like eye contact they were having was just so special to me. So that was my favorite moment and it just happened on the second day. So that was really exciting to get that. So that was my intimate moment shot. Now the next type of shot I'm looking for is a detail shot. Now some people might say, well, an obvious shot in a situation like this might be a shot of Monique's hands holding a sloth. or might be a shot of, you know, the sloth's eye or the claw of the sloth or something like that. Those are obvious and those are things I'm looking for. But at the same time, I'm looking for something else, something a little bit different. Time goes on, I'm formulating more ideas. I'm looking around because I don't just want like a detail shot for the sake of a shot. I want something that might, 
I want something that might be out of the ordinary, something that you would see after you spend a couple of days with the person. And I also want that to be a nice picture as well. One thing I see people do with their detail shots often is they just kind of take a picture of it. So if it's like a hand, they just take a picture of a hand. I'm also looking for my detail shot to have nice light. I'd like it to have layers. I'd like it to have nice composition, all those things. Like I, it's not just like, oh, that existed. There's a detail, I got a picture of it. So spending time with Monique, you know, some of the obvious things is I did see some of these kennels stacked up at her office. That was interesting. Just this mess of kennels. It just showed like, you know, how overwhelmed they are being the only slot center there. And her, that was a nice detail shot. Things like that. I'm looking for things like that. But my favorite detail shot was this shot because this happened in the morning about the fourth day I was there. I noticed that Monique is very, very hands-on and she's also very uh, feet on, foot on boots on, whatever you want to call it. But I noticed that she is out in the field. She's out there getting her boots dirty. And there were her boots next to a tote bag that she had with a picture of a sloth on it. So it was kind of perfect. It had these multiple layers. There's this beautiful side light coming in. So that was my favorite detail shot because it just said so much about Monique as a person, her interest in sloths, but it just also showed how hands-on she is. So always really thinking deeply about every single shot that I'm taking. And so for the next type of shot I'm looking for, again, I'm not looking for these in any sort of order. These are just six different kinds of shots that are always sort of floating around. I don't know what I'm doing right now. They're floating around in my head. They're just somewhere in there. I'm trying to get these shots. And again, not just one of these shots. I'm trying to get different versions of these shots. But that's kind of what I'm looking for. Those are the ideas that are going through my head as I'm documenting people and as I'm doing photo stories. The next shot is an everyday live shot. What I mean by an everyday live shot is I'm just looking for a shot that brings you into that person's world. And typically that happens for me when I can get into their home. Of course, with their permission, I'm not like hiding out in their home. Like, oh, hey, just how you doing? Oh, just under your bed and no. I do tell them the reason I want to photograph them in their home, and of course I get permission. And that reason is, is I want to humanize them. I want to bring them to life. I want people to care about them. A photo story is the same as if you're watching a movie in a lot of ways, right? If you don't care about the characters, then you don't really care about the plot. You don't really care about what they do. You have to have some investment in the characters. You have to have some investment in the people, in these stories. So for Monique, I wanted to see what her life is like at home. And, you know, I noticed she was very caring at her home. You get all these little sloth things, like a sloth keychain and, you know, sloth books and things like that. But she also has three dogs that she loves and that she nurtures and that she looks after. Just gives a little slice of life. And that was one option and that was great and that worked out pretty well. My favorite shot was this one right here because this really showed the other work that she does outside of animals. Once a week, Monique volunteers at an orphanage for children and she teaches English. And she spends a few hours there and the kids love her and they were so excited when she came there and she donates her time. It's something that she was even a little bit uncomfortable with me documenting at first. I kind of had to talk to her and tell her why I was doing it. But it was great. Like it really kind of showed the kind of person that she is, not just with animals, but with people as well. So that's what I chose this for my everyday life. Again, I have multiple shots, but this was my favorite one because it was something a little bit out of the ordinary. Of course, when you're looking at a story about a lady that works in sloth conservation, you're expecting to see her with sloths, but you know, it's nice to see something else about her life as well. I also did get some shots of her at a gallery where she was buying a sloth print. Like it was just so obvious, but it was so awesome. Like she, she was buying a sloth painting that someone made. So the next thing I'm looking for is a portrait. Now I don't just want like this shot. I don't need, I mean, that's okay if someone has a really intriguing face and I get that shot, but I'm looking for something deeper. I want a lot of different layers to my portraits. And typically my portrait shots, I'll try some stuff when things come up. Like if I, there's some great light there and I see a good chance of a portrait, I'll stop and I'll ask. But really my best portrait shots tend to come a few days into following around my subjects because the more I'm learning about the person, the more ideas I'm getting. Those ideas aren't just like ideas on where to pose them, but it's also like how to pose them, what kind of posture you want them to have, you know, how big do you want them in their frame, what are you trying to say with your lighting, what are you trying to say with your composition, all of those things. So the more time I'm spending with people, I'm starting to get ideas, I'm starting to formulate a concept of how I want to put all these elements together to get a striking portrait. So I like to take portraits from my 35. That's not to say I don't use a 75 or I don't use a 50 and I don't sometimes get closer shots, but really my favorite portraits tend to be with a, a little bit wider, a little bit pulled back. For Monique, I started to formulate the idea of her posture by just spending time with her because I noticed when we were driving, when she was driving on the wheel and she'd always be looking up and it honestly like scared me a lot because I'm like, why aren't you looking straight? You know, you're looking up, not straight. And then I realized like, oh, she's looking for slots. I started to talk about, she's like, yeah, I'm always sort of looking up. I'm like, great, but right now we're driving. But I did notice that characteristic about her. So again, you're banking all these characteristics, all these things you're learning about when you're observing people, when you're watching them and you're documenting them and you're formulating ideas. I thought, what a great idea for her posture. I thought that would be wonderful. So right when I noticed that and, I, and after she told me, she's like, I'm always looking up. I'm like, okay, great. For your portrait, when I do your portrait, you're definitely looking up somewhere. So that was my idea for her posture. But then I was trying to think about my composition and where I wanted her. I wanted something quite different. I wanted something with her in the forest and I wanted something pulled back quite a bit. I wanted like a really, really wide shot. I was looking for a background 
background as well. What kind of color and what kind of background and what kind of layers do I want to tell the story? So I noticed near her center, it was right pressed up against the forest. And I noticed at a certain time of day, there was this great shadow that ran across. It was very moody, big strip of light, and then just like a complete shadow. And I knew right away I wanted to put her in that area. And now when I'm thinking about how close I want to get and how I want to frame her, thinking about the person and also factoring that into my composition. So Monique is a very, very humble person. She's also very overwhelmed. She's the only person in Suriname. There's no government program for sloth rescue. She's, she has volunteers, but she's doing this herself. It's out by herself and does rescues by herself. So I wanted to show her quite small in the frame. One, because she's humble, but two, because she's so overwhelmed. Just being, you know, being the only person that's taking care of sloth rescue in an entire country is a bit overwhelming. So I wanted that to come through in my composition. So that's why I took this shot. You can see all those elements. You see the moodiness of the light, that big shadow. You see the forest in the background, obviously tells a story about the sloths. And then you see how small she is in the shot, because I wanted to show how overwhelmed she is and how big of a problem it is and how small she is in relation to this big problem. And then looking up, obviously, like I told you before, it's because she is always looking up. So I'm factoring all these things out and that's why I chose this portrait and that's how this sort of came together. It's all these different factors, all these different elements, all these things that I'm thinking about through the course of multiple days. So that's why I chose this as my favorite portrait of Monique. The last shot is something beautiful. What do I mean by that? Aren't you just always looking for beautiful pictures? Yes, but I don't want just a picture to be beautiful. I need it to tell a story as well. So when I say something beautiful, this is the shot that when I'm working on an assignment, this would be the shot that if I just had to run one, if it was just gonna run the front page of a magazine or the lead picture for an article, this is that shot. That's the shot I want. I want everything to come together in there for one shot, like one really powerful shot. And for my personal project, this is the shot that I'm probably gonna use in my book. Get something like this, the something beautiful shot, like it's something I really have to get on every single shoot. And it's something, it's the hardest shot to get on every single story that I do. And it's the one I put the most stress on myself to get. For me, this shot really came on my last day. Monique was working with a veterinarian that she brought a sloth to who actually was helping rehabilitate a sloth with a broken arm. And she had said, oh, later in the week, I'm gonna do some rehab work with, with the veterinarian and with the sloth and we're gonna see if he's ready for release. And so I thought, oh great, well, I wanna be there for that. So I asked them and we scheduled for me to be there and it just happened to be a beautiful light. It was my last day. And that day Monique was running late and the sun was going down. And I thought like I was getting really, really stressed about the shot because I knew it had potential to be a great shot. And Monique was working on something else. She was working on another project with the government. It was a conservation project. And I was like, while she was finishing that up, like, okay, Monique, we have to go. But like, at the same time, it's their life, it's their work. So, you know, I kept pushing, pushing, pushing. We got to Ava's house at the very last minute. The sun was dipping beyond the horizon as it was pouring through the trees. There was this beautiful, magical light, something I just adore. Like, I got this great moment between Monique and the sloth, and it was just like the perfect way to end. So this is the kind of shot I'm looking for when I say something beautiful. So that's it. That's a new segment. So that's my six for one segment. I'll try this out, see if you guys like it. I'm gonna end here, guys, with a full slideshow of the work. You've come this far. You've been invested this far. You've listened to me for this far. So here's just a full slideshow of the overall story about Monique, the sloth lady of Suriname. So check it out, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you, guys. Bye.